Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's book launch. It is our great pleasure to welcome our speaker, Professor Xiao Aqing from Academia Sinica. In today's session, he is going to talk about his new book, uh, Politics and Cultural Nativism in 1970s Taiwan, uh, Youth, Narrative, and Nationalism. So the whole thing started off uh, because I heard about this, uh, the publication of this new book uh, in the summer. I talked to David and we both agree that it would be fantastic to invite him to so as to share his research outcome. This book is hot off the press and was only on the market for a few days. The SOAS Library has already ordered an e-copy. I was told just now that a student will be able to access the e-book via a SOAS Library uh, from tomorrow. So, you know, it's uh, very lucky that you heard the introduction today, then you can actually read the book tomorrow. Before the talk, uh, allow me to introduce uh, Professor Xiao. He gained his uh, PhD in sociology at the University of California, San Diego. His expertise ranges from cultural nationalism, language, Taiwanese literature, ethnicity, collective memory, sociology of generation, that's a, a new one, and discourse. He's now a research fellow, professor, and deputy director of the Institute of Sociology, Academia Sinica. Our students are familiar with his work. Uh, the first book in English, Contemporary Taiwanese uh, Cultural Nationalism. Many chapters of this book are on our reading list. And this book focuses on the rise of cultural nationalism in Taiwan and also its role in Taiwan's political change and democratization. This, this old, older book uh, concentrates on the importance uh, of intellectuals, writers, and linguists. In many ways, uh, that book explores the emergence of cultural nationalism in the 1980s and 90s. It is extremely helpful for students who are interested in Taiwan's nationalism or nation building through culture during this period. Compared to his first book, which was uh, published in 2000, the new book, Politics and Cultural Nativism in 1970s Taiwan, has shifted his research focus to the earlier and seemingly uh, more murkier 1970s. I always told students that uh, cultural change as well as political transformation do not happen overnight. Taiwanese transition started well before the lifting of martial law. Unfortunately, there has been very little research on this period, written in English, especially in the cultural sphere. The publication of this book is timely and long overdue. Um, I read uh, his uh, Chinese version. He describes these two books, one uh, on cultural nationalism in the 80s and 90s, and this new one, uh, like twins. Okay, so in many ways, the two books are tightly interconnected and can be read in tandem. They enable us to get a more nuanced reading of Taiwan's cultural nationalism and political change. In this book, Professor Xiao uh, explores the turning point in Taiwan's history and traces the trajectory of changing political climate from the perspective of generational change, especially focusing on the rise of Taiwan's baby boomers in the 1970s. He places particular importance on the rise of a younger generation who had no, um, you know, uh, first-hand uh, 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 personal experience of life on the mainland, and offers a closer reading 
of a period of drastic change, openly challenging the status quo and shifting their concerns from China to Taiwan. So this is really a crucial moment of bubbling uh, 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 and self-doubting and, 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 and challenging the, uh, uh, the KMT regime. So apart from the two major monographs, you can see quite a few of his uh, uh, co-edited books in, uh, in our library. So to find out more, please search uh, our library. Um, I think we have at least five books uh, um, either authored by him or co-edited by him. But by tomorrow, there will be six, okay? So he told me that his recent research interests are drawn to the ocean. Uh, one Direction explores the relationship between the ocean, fishing village uh, tourism, and national imagination in Taiwan. And the other imagines the role of Taiwan's civil society actors in the territorial dispute over Diao Yu Tai uh, Island. So two, again, linked, but very different uh, uh, topics. After his presentation, we will open the floor for Q and A. Uh, may I remind you to post your questions using the chat function. If we have loads, then we have to uh, uh, you have to take uh, chances that we probably will choose yours. If there are not so many, and we can actually ask you to come uh, and ask the question yourself. Okay. So you can find a speech bubble icon at the top of the screen and type your question there. So we know you put your question forward. So without further ado, Professor Xiao, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. I would like to thank Professor Zhang Bi for inviting me uh, to talk about my new book. Uh, my book is a story about the 1970s Taiwan, about the critical role the younger generation played in the uh, political and the cultural change in this decade, and about the relationship uh, between the political and the cultural change in the 1970s on the one hand, and the democratization and the indigenization of Taiwan since the 1980s on the other. Um, today I will introduce you the new book to you by telling, uh, by telling this story uh, very briefly. So uh, first let me show my PowerPoint. Okay, uh, before I talk about the new book, I would like to say something about my previous book, Contemporary Taiwanese uh, cultural nationalism. As Professor Zhang mentioned just now, uh, this old, old book analyzed how uh, Taiwanese nationalism influenced the literature, historiography, and the language revival uh, movement in the, uh, in the eight, 1980s and the 1990s. I deal with the uh, 1970s very briefly in this previous book. And uh, when I finished writing the manuscript of this uh, book, I realized that uh, I think I have to work on 1970s Taiwan as an independent project. There are two reasons for this. Uh, first, so far most of the research on Taiwan's democratization, national identity, and the Taiwanese nationalism focuses on the 1980s and after. Except for the large number of studies of Xiangtu, Wenxue, nativist literature of the 1970s, this decade has been an understudied period even up to now. The second reason is that uh, even those scholars who acknowledge the significance of political cultural change in the 1970s have paid little attention to the uh, effects of generational factors in political and cultural change in the 1970s. Uh, 
uh, also scholars have ignored the continuing influence of Chinese nationalism on political and cultural activists of the younger generation uh, in this decade. Uh, that is, in terms of national consciousness among political and cultural dissidents, generally speaking, there was difference between the uh, 1970s on the one hand and the 1980s and the beyond on the other. Um, my new book is intended to fill these two research gaps. I argue that uh, to achieve this purpose, we need a detailed investigation of the efforts of three groups of young intellectuals in the 1970s. The first group was uh, cultural activists who uh, rediscovered the Taiwan new literature, Taiwan Xin Wen Xue, that is modern literature written by uh, Taiwanese authors in the Japanese colonial period. The second group was writers and advocates of a socially conscious uh, nativist literature. And the third group was young intellectuals who joined the political opposition movement, especially those young political dissidents who studied uh, the Taiwanese anti-colonial uh, anti movement that challenged Japanese rule in the 1920s. Uh, okay, so far, uh, so is my voice clear to you? Yes. Okay, okay, then I will continue. Uh, with uh, these groups or these young uh, political and uh, cultural dissidents, were studying the uh, colonial past or representing or even trying to change the present. Uh, these young uh, uh, dissidents were Chinese in their consciousness. In general, they drew on the Chinese national story uh, constructed and uh, inculcated by the KMT to make sense of Taiwan's past and the present. This story or narrative is just like what you see uh, on my uh, PowerPoint. But uh, I'm sorry that I don't have time to get into its de details. You can just uh, uh, read it. These young intellectuals narrated their lives in this public and collective uh, story of China's fall and rise, a story that situated them in time and structured their agency. What changed during the, uh, this decade is that Taiwan's colonial history and the contemporary province became more and more important in this uh, narrative, uh, in this nar national narrative. Uh, we can say that for almost everyone, however, the, this master narrative, according to which they were all Chinese, went unchallenged during, uh, until the 1980s. The continuing influence of this master narrative in Taiwan and its eventual decline are very important for us to study today because of the significance of the very same uh, master narrative in the PRC. The key element of this national narrative is the same uh, recovery from national humiliation that once inspired Taiwanese intellectuals to political and uh, cultural activism in the 1970s. As I will show in the presentation today, for many uh, political and cultural dissidents. This decade was an early stage of transition from an old uh, Chinese identity to a new Taiwanese uh, consciousness. Uh, 
So, um, where should where should the uh, story about 1970s Taiwan start? My book, uh, my book starts it with the uh, uh, 1960s. For the KMB government in exile, the 1960s was a decade of consolidation and the successful uh, repression of the opposition. Like many countries, Taiwan uh, experienced the rapid growth of both young population and the higher education in the early post-war period. So as a result, a new highly educated generation, including members from local Taiwanese and mainland backgrounds, were emerging. Since the rise of uh, modern Chinese nationalism in the late 19th century, young people in Taiwan that came to maturity in the 1960s was the first generation that the KMT uh, government had successfully indoctrinated with its particular version of Chinese nationalism uh, in peacetime situation. The KMT ideology dominated uh, the post-war generation's education and uh, had a very powerful assimilating effect on their uh, political attitudes. Also, the island society was shaped by the uh, exile mentality of mainlanders, which emphasized the possibility of returning to uh, their old homes uh, in on the on the Chinese mainland, the government initiated patriotism and uh, anti-communism prevailed in the 1960s. But unlike many other places um, in the world that went through the disturbance of the 60s, uh, brought about by the student and the youth movements, colleges. Uh, and college students and young intellectuals in Taiwan did not create any uh, significant disturbance. The KMT's uh, tight political control created a politically uh, inactive young uh, generation. Um, it was not until the, uh, the 1970s that the KMT's authoritarian rule encountered uh, major challenges and a significant political and uh, cultural changes occurred. And these changes was, uh, were brought about mainly by diplomatic failures. At the end of 1969, Taiwan and Japan began to dispute the sovereignty of the Diaoita Islands when the U.S. was preparing to return them to uh, Japan. Then, and in the spring of 1971, college students in northern Taiwan organized, organized the uh, Defender the Diao Yitai's movement, Bao Diao, uh, Bao Wei, Diao Yitai Yun Dong, or Bao Diao, to protest against, against the U.S. and Japan. Uh, the Diao Yitai incident was uh, uh, turning point, but it was only in the beginning of Taiwan's diplomatic failures in this decade. It was followed by the exclusion of Taiwan from the United Nations. Also, the U.S. Uh, began to normalize the relations with China. Then Taiwan blocked off relations with increasingly more countries, such as Japan. Uh, when they recognized the, the PRC. Mm. From the very beginning of the Diao Yita incident, college students, especially those at the National Taiwan uh, University, NTU, become more and more enthusiastic about the issues of uh, social political reforms. As one NTU student put it at the time, the Diaoita incident created, uh, I quote, a new situation that never happened in the previous 20 years. It was the first time student interest had been so eagerly 
focus on political and uh, social issues, uh, unquote. The students demanded not only uh, such campus reform as educational independence and uh, university democratization. They also demanded a general social political reform, even the complete re-election re -election of the uh, National Assembly, Kuomintanghui, and the Legislative Yuan, uh, Li Fa Yuan, which was still a, a politically uh, sensitive issue at that time. These college students were supported by a group of young reformist intellectuals surrounding the uh, journal, the, the intellectual uh, Da Xue Zha Zi. Um, as many researchers have pointed out, rapid and dramatic social changes, such as war, civil disorder, exile, and so on, uh, typically create painful experience to people and become major uh, traumatic events. In history, uh, the kind of traumatic events usually transform people of the same or similar age into politically or socially active groups with a strong uh, generational identity. This typically uh, happens as a result of a process of uh, awakening. In this process, people develop a critical uh, consciousness about the status quo and may take uh, action accordingly. This is pretty much the case of those young, uh, and those college students and young uh, intellectuals who were shocked by the Delta incident and Taiwan's uh, continuing major diplomatic failures. They argued that for Taiwan to survive the difficult situation, uh, the KMD government must abolish the, the uh, exile mentality and wake up from the dream of retaking the Chinese mainland and open its eyes to, to the uh, true reality of Taiwan. At the, the beginning of the 1970s, these awakened college students and the young uh, intellectuals became a new social force that demanded the democracy and social political reforms based on a return to reality ID. Uh, that is the idea of uh, Hui Gui Xian Shi. However, after two years of social political activism following the uh, Diao Yita incident, by 1974, the college students and the young intellectuals were suppressed into uh, silence by the uh, KMT. But uh, as we see that uh, the suppression of the social and the political activism did not mean the disappearance of what I called the return to uh, reality generation. Uh, on the country, many awakened young people found alternative ways to uh, realize their reformist aspiration, such as joining the emerging opposition movement, the Danwai uh, movement, led by uh, young local Taiwanese politicians, Huang Xinjie and uh, Kang Linxiang. Uh, in addition, the na nativist cultural currents began to rise, which included the research on modern literature and the social political activism of the Japanese uh, colonial period. Uh, these cultural currents, uh, I mean, these cultural currents also included the promotion of uh, nativist uh, literature with the strong social critical uh, consciousness. The main initiators of this cultural currents were precisely uh, awakened young uh, intellectuals and the college students. As I have mentioned, the KMT ideological 
indoctrination had a powerful assimilating effect on both local uh, Taiwanese and the mainland young people. In this decade, those young political dissidents and cultural uh, activists of local Taiwanese background who promoted nativism relied mainly on the uh, historical narrative of Chinese nationalism as a frame of reference to make sense of their contemporary uh, opposition movement or modern, or modern literature and social political activism of the Japanese uh, colonial period. In general, they shared a sense of uh, Chinese national identity, but they began to uh, challenge the KMT ideology that they took for granted when they uh, grew up, up in the 1960s, uh, in the 1960s by rediscovering uh, Taiwan's past and promoting a return to reality and a native soil. Um, here, uh, here are some uh, publications. Um, here are some publications authored by some intellectuals of the return to uh, reality generation. Uh, all of these have, uh, uh, have uh, titles which demonstrated their uh, strong generational identity and the reformist passion. Uh, these are just uh, selective, selective examples of many, uh, many such publications in the uh, 1970s. You can see uh, those uh, book titles. Now for the uh, rest of my talk, I would like to focus on the three groups of young uh, political and uh, cultural activists in the 1970s, which were most uh, significant to the following uh, political democratization, cultural indig indigenization, historical rewriting, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, let me start with the rediscovery of modern literature of the Japanese colonial period. Um, until the beginning of the 1970s, little had been known about the history of modern uh, literature written by Taiwanese authors under the Japanese. Uh, in early in the early 1970s, when the awakened young intellectuals of local Taiwanese background try to uh, rediscover Taiwan's past, their focus was on the uh, Japanese colonial period. In uh, May 1972, Chen Shaotin published an article entitled China's Main Fourth Movement and the New Literature Movement in Taiwan in the magazine, The Intellectual. So uh, he became the pioneer of a general investigation of the colonial literary history in this decade. Uh, in the year before Chen Shaotin published this article, Taiwan suffered a series of diplomatic setbacks, including the uh, Diao Yitai incident, the withdrawal from the UN, and so on. Um, as I mentioned during this period, the magazine, the intellectual, which supported uh, the reformist college students, became a discursive center that called for political and social uh, reforms. As a native, uh, as a native Taiwanese, Chen Xiaotin was precisely the president of this magazine. Also, he was one of the major uh, advocates of the complete re-election of the National Assembly and the, the uh, legis Legislative Union, which were dominated by the older generation of Marylanders. Uh, in his pioneering article, under the framework of uh, the historical narrative of Chinese nationalism, he defined the nature of modern literature written by the Taiwanese authors 
under Japanese colonialism as a form of Chinese nationalist resistance. Uh, he also described it as part of the changes brought about by uh, China's literary revolution of May 4th, 1919. Uh, um, after uh, the publication of Chen Shaodin's article, many young intellectuals followed him and uh, devoted themselves to rediscovering the history of modern literature of the colonial period. Uh, the the in, interpretive framework on which they relied to understand the uh, significance of the modern literature written by the Taoists under the Japanese under the Japanese rule uh, was a little different from that in Chen Shaotin's article. As a result, more than uh, a thousand of a thousand of writers of an older generation, including Yang Kui, Song Li He, Lai He, Li He Zhuo, Wu Zuo Liu, Wu Xinrong, Zhang Shenqie, and uh, and so on, were rediscovered. Their works were republished and uh, attracted an increasing number of young admirers. They were widely read with eagerness. Uh, among these young admirers were, for example, Zhang Liangzi and uh, Lin Ruiming, who both later uh, became leading researchers of Taiwanese uh, literature and the major promoters of cultural indig indigenization. In discussing how Yang Kui's story described the suffering of the Taiwanese people under Japanese rule, Lin Ruiming wrote at the time that, uh, let me quote, this was, the f uh, this, this was the fate that uh, the Chinese people had endured together. This is the larger meaning of Yang Kui's works. He wrote about the background with which he was familiar, about the grief of the sons and daughters of China. And in a broader sense, they are originally part of the harvest of Chinese uh, literature. <clears throat> and the spirit of Yang Kui has already been revitalized by the younger generation. This new found strength is China's hope for the future, uh, unquote. So like Lin Zuimin, many young intellectuals tried to define the present situation and find out the future by rediscovering the past under the framework of Chinese nationalist uh, national uh, narrative. They try to know who they say, who, who themselves were by connecting uh, their own generation to the uh, previous. Now I would like to uh, move on to the relationship between nativist literature and uh, a significant awakening in the younger uh, generation. As I pointed out, uh, the rediscovery of Taiwan's modern literature of the colonial period uh, began with Chen Shaotin's uh, 1972 article, China's Main Fourth uh, Movement and the, the New Literature Movement in Taiwan. More and more uh, young intellectuals were eager to rediscover and study the colonial literary legacy. Uh, meanwhile, a nativist literature was emerging. These literary currents uh, mutually reinforced one another. Many promoters of nativist literature were also involved in the re-examination of colonial Taiwanese literature. Over the uh, next uh, several years, up to the nativist literature debate, Xiangdu Wenxue Lun Zhan in 1977, a large number of essays supporting nativist literature appeared in newspapers and magazines. Such local Taiwanese writers as uh, Chen Yin Zhen, Huang Chunmin, Wang Zhenhe, 
Yang Qingzhu and uh, Wang Tuo became a uh, leading nativist uh, writer, writers. Um, as a literary critic commented at the time, none of the, uh, uh, I mean, none of the young people of the nativist writers generation had ever seen what the Chinese mainland was like, and all had received the same education in post-war uh, Taiwan. The young writers of nativist literature were typical examples of this generation that was deeply influenced by the KMT ideology and the exile mentality. But they were also clear examples of the uh, return to reality generation that emerged in the context of Taiwan's diplomatic failures. Let me uh, take one tour, for example. In 1978, Wang Tuo became a Dangwai's candidate for Jilong City in National Assembly elections. In an interview, when asked about the event that had influenced him the most, that is the biggest turning point in his life, he replied in this way, quote, I think what influenced me the most is a series of incidents from protecting the Diao Yitais to leaving the UN. I was educated by these continuing incidents. In the past, we only stayed in the classroom and only considered a few intellectual issues, but the defender the Diao Yitais movement brought me in contact with the wider world of the masses. And for the first time in 30 years, we understand how to uh, take action and how to think theoretically, think about why uh, this whole state and the nation have turned out like this, uh, unquote. As for, uh, as for other nativist writers, such as Chen Yinzhen, Huang Zunmin, Yang Qingzhu, they all shared experiences similar to uh, Wang Tuo's. Uh, moreover, uh, as far as the um, readership is concerned, um, let me quote another important literary critic, He Xin, on this point. He Xin uh, was also a professor of Western literature. As he pointed out in his uh, 1978 article, uh, when talking about how the popularity of the reported literature, Bao Dao, Wen Xue, was stimulated by the uh, nativist literature. He said, uh, I quote, a new leadership has formed many young intellectuals and youth who are entering the middle class. They are no longer in bondage to the past. They do not have uh, experiences of the struggles against the Japanese and the communists on the Chinese mainland, which have become a psychological burden of their previous generation. Now they are getting to know themselves. These young people were born on Taiwan and have spent over 30 years growing up here. This explains why they are most concerned about their native land the place where they were born and uh, uh, brought up, unquote. Uh, so uh, in brief, not only the writers of nativist literature and the reported uh, literature, but also uh, a readership to appreciate them represented the formation of the return to reality generation since the beginning of the 1970s. This generation's formation uh, began at a time when Taiwan was confronting major international uh, political change. Also, as I pointed out earlier, it involved as a process of uh, awakening for many young people to which uh, nativist writers and their supporters belonged. 
Now let's move it to the uh, uh, the third group. Uh, the, the focus, uh, one part of my focus on my research in the new book. So let's look at the relationship between the return to uh, reality generation and the Dangwai opposition movement. The opposition movement again uh, momentum in this decade when anti-KMT uh, political dissidents began to develop an island-wide network of connections. Both Huang Xinjie and Kang Lingxiang became leaders in Dangwai. In this period, uh, members of the Dangwai uh, generally had a very strong historical consciousness, a powerful sense of history. Their historical sense had two uh, fundamental aspects. First, a deep awareness of generational identity, and uh, second, a greater concern for uh, Taiwanese history, with a special interest in the history of Taiwanese anti-colonial uh, movements in the 1920s. This Dangwai spatial sense of history uh, was first expressed by uh, Kang Lingxiang. In February 1975, at the uh, legislative year, as a legislator, Kang Lingxiang uh, criticized the policy report given by the Prime uh, Minister Jiang Jingguo. He pointed out that people over 65 had dominated the leadership of government. He emphasized that uh, about 87% of the population was composed of the generation under the, the age of uh, 49. Therefore, he demanded that the KMD government listen to the voice of the younger uh, generation, which would de decide, the, decide the future of Taiwan. Equally important is the fact that he urged the government to appreciate the significance of Taiwanese history and culture, especially the history of a variety of anti-Japanese and anti-Japanese movements motivated by uh, modern political ideology in the 1920s. He argued that in 50 years of Japanese rule, the Chinese people suffered pain and sacrifice no less than their compatriots in, uh, on the Chinese mainland during the anti-Japanese war. Uh, in fact, in each issue of the Taiwan Political Review, Taiwan Zhenlun, there was an article on the history of Taiwanese anti-colonial struggle. Taiwan Political Review was the very first Dangwai uh, magazine in the 1970s, which was founded in uh, 1975 uh, by Huang Xinjie, Kang Lingxiang, and uh, Zhang Junhong, and others. Um, as I have mentioned, although the uh, political and the social activism was suppressed by the KMT government, government in the early uh, 1970s, many awakened young intellectuals who were younger than Huang Xinjie uh, and uh, Kang Lingxiang joined the emerging opposition movement. These intellectuals represented a, a rising younger generation and show a strong uh, generational uh, consciousness. They usually referred to themselves as, as uh, Dangwai, new generation, Dangwai, Xin Sen Dai. Uh, for example, Zhang Junhong, who later became the chairman of the DPP, once described his generation as an uh, anxious and uh, frustrated new uh, generation under the KMT rule. He was the chief editor of the of a Dangwai magazine, Zhe Yi Dai, Zha Zi, which was precisely entitled New uh, Generation in English. <laughs> 
um, like the Taiwan Political Review, the other three most important Danwai uh, political magazines published before the 1979 Kaohsiung incident. That is a uh, new generation. The 80s and the Formosa represent, uh, represented many articles on the, uh, presented many articles on the Taiwanese history, especially those about the anti-Japanese movements of the uh, 19 20s. Meanwhile, uh, Huang, Huang Xiong wrote a series of books about the history of Taiwanese anti-colonialism, including the first uh, biography of one of the major anti-colonial leaders, Jiang Wei Sui. Like many other young intellectuals who joined Dang Wai, Huang Wang Xiong uh, compared the the anti-KMT pro-democracy Danwai movement of the 1970s to the Taiwanese anti-colonial uh, movement, movement of the 1920s, showing the typical strong uh, sense of history of the return to reality uh, generation. Um, according to uh, Huang Wangsheng, Taiwanese and colonial activists were uh, Chinese uh, nationalists in their consciousness. He argued that their, activity, uh, their activity, activities promoted the Han national spirit of the Taiwanese people and made the Taiwanese compatriots proud of the Chinese nation. For this reason, they had nothing to apologize for to the ancestral land, much less to the uh, Chinese nation. Huang Xiu hoped in his uh, publications that his works would help the Chinese nation unite by promoting the uh, spiritual legacy of the anti-colonial activists during the national crisis in the 1970s. Huang Xiu believed that the tradition of anti-colonial activism could give people a sense of connection and identity with the Chinese nation. Um, by the way, as you may know, Huang Huangxiong served as chairperson uh, of the Transitional Justice Commission Zhuxin Zhuanxin Zhenyi Weiyanhui recently in 2018 under the Tsai Ing-wen's administration. Um, another example was another Li, uh, Li Xiu-lian, who later became uh, Chen Sui-bian's uh, vice president. In 1978, as a Danwai uh, candidate in the election for the National Assembly members, Li Xiu-lian published her book entitled uh, Taiwan's Past and the Future, Taiwan the Guoqi Yu Wei Lai. It was the most systematic presentation of Dang Wai's sense of history and their uh, historical narrative. This book can be regarded as a precursor to the Taiwanese uh, consciousness and the Taiwanese nationalism that arose in the uh, 1980s. Um, in her book, Li Xiu-lian emphasized Taiwan's positioning with, within uh, China. Let me quote. Uh, yes, uh, Taiwan is a province of China. Most of the Taiwanese people's ancestors came from the Chinese mainland. And this is exactly why to love Taiwan is to love China. To talk Taiwanese is, is to talk uh, Chinese. To cherish Taiwanese culture is to cherish Chinese culture. And to deal with Chinese history is, of course, to deal with uh, Chinese history. But uh, the Xiuian also argued that there is a similarity between the basic province of women and the historical fate of Chinese people, and that she wanted to 
transcend the traditional Sinocentric position and adopted the standpoint of Taiwan uh, in itself. She described Taiwan's history as a continuous stream of uh, immigration and colonization. The Spaniards, the Dutch, Chinese mean loyalists under Kosinga, the Qin and the Japanese, for her, for her, for the Julian, were all colonizers who established uh, foreign regimes, while like uh, Zheng Quan. By saying this, Li Xiulian hinted that the KMT, like the previous ruler, rulers in Taiwan, was a colonizer, a foreigner a regime. She argued that the people of the island must fight for control of government and uh, destiny. Li Xiulian's representation of Taiwanese history uh, was radical and uh, anticipated the later radicalization of the opposition movement and its new historical narrative due to the uh, brutal suppression by the KMD government in the years following the Kaohsiung incident of December uh, 1979. So like those cultural activists who uh, rediscovered the Taiwan new literature in the Japanese colonial period and the writers and the supporters of uh, nativist literature. The young uh, political dissidents who study the Taiwanese history, such as Huang Wangsheng, Li Xiulian, and other Danwai magazine authors, drew on the historical uh, narrative of Chinese nationalism as a frame of reference on the one hand, but try to broaden Taiwan's, try to broaden Taiwan's history and the contemporary reality to their fellow uh, countrymen's attention on the other. Um, before I move to uh, the conclusion of my new book, let me quote, uh, let me quote, let me quote a short essay uh, by the writer journalist Yang Zhao. He once characterized the 1970s in Taiwan as a period of uh, discovering China Fashion Zhongguo, but he also argues, uh, let me quote, we can use the term discover Taiwan to describe the core of thought in the 1970s. But the people at the time in the 1970s thought what they discovered was China rather than Taiwan. As time passed into 19, the 1970s, uh, the concept of China itself became the most important object of controversy. The question forming in people's minds, in fact, was could the society we had developed and the life we were living in Taiwan be regarded as Chinese at all? Those who gave a pos uh, positive answer to this, to this question began to cast a dubious eye on the historical and the geographical symbolism used to uh, represent China before, those by byproducts of nostalgia, believing that they were really empty and ruthless. They argued that only when we grasped the, pre grasped the present and what was close to us could we truly grasp China. Um, this idea ran through the major cultural debates of the time. The idea that Taiwan in reality could stand for China. This idea was a wellspring of the subsequent discourse of native uh, Taiwanese. But it first emerged in the form of a vehement uh, Chinese nationalism. Unquote. Um, I think the documentation and analysis, uh, and analysis in my new book supported Yang Zhao's tentative but insightful uh, argument. Uh, in conclusion, I would like to say that Taiwan is still under the influence of the major political and the cultural changes of the 1970s. My new book argues for a, a generational perspective on the political and cultural descent of this uh, decade. 
my book uh, analyzes the three major changes that were crucial to the following democratization and the uh, indigenization process. They included the rediscovery of the history of modern literature and the social political activism of the Japanese uh, colonial period, the promotion of nativist literature, and the opposition uh, movement. I argue that these changes were pushed mainly by uh, members of the post-war generation that had a strong uh, generational consciousness, as well as a sense of Chinese identity with an orientation to Taiwan. For many of them, this decade was an early stage of transition from an old Chinese identity to a new Chinese consciousness. Um, the combination of a powerful uh, generational identity, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I mean the combination of a powerful generational identity and a strong historical consciousness was an important source of agency that motivated them to uh, change the status quo. The Taiwan turn taken by the reality generation is the single most important uh, reorientation in post-war Taiwan because it formed the matrix of the cultural politics of Taiwanese nationalism and the democratization in the following decades. This return to reality generation has shaped the history of Taiwan over the last uh, five decades. Now, uh, the members of this generation are getting old, if not withering. Um, also, in terms of historical comparison, research on the role of the post-war generation in political and uh, cultural change in Taiwan should emphasize the critical decade of the 1970s, not the 1960s, the decade that had received the most uh, attention in the West. Okay, so um, thank you for your listening and the patience. Uh, let me just stop here. <clears throat>